Lysophore is a nutritional emulsifier, and so it's based off of lysophospholipids, which really um, help with the overall fat digestion in broilers, starting from emulsification to hydrolysis, and then ultimately to absorption. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode to the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we discuss the latest in poultry industry, uh, poultry nutrition research and industry trends in approximately 10 minutes. My name is Sam Rochville. I'm an associate professor in the poultry science department at Auburn University, uh, joined today by a longtime uh, friend and collaborator, Dr. Vanessa Seri from uh, Kimmen, uh, where she works as a technical service manager. Uh, hey, Vanessa, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How about you? Good. Doing well. Good to talk with you. Um, I know you have, uh, Kimmen has a, a wide portfolio of different products, uh, but I know recently um, you and I have spent some time talking and working with uh, Lysaport. And so just wanted to kind of get right to it about, uh, you know, what Lysaport is um, and kind of where it fits in, in today's poultry operations um, that, 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 and, and how it applies uh, in those situations. Yeah, certainly. So Lysophore is a nutritional emulsifier. And so it's based off of lysophospholipids, which really um, help with the overall fat digestion in broilers, starting from emulsification to hydrolysis and then ultimately to absorption. Mm -hmm. And so certainly from an emulsification standpoint, um, you want um, improved benefits from micelle uh, production which allows for proper hydrolysis or access for those types of enzymes to access the micelles to ultimately cleave off free fatty acids, um, monoglycerides for that broiler to, to utilize um, in its um, growth. Kemen calls all poultry experts. You already know the key to a profitable operation is healthy, productive birds. Our team of poultry experts are driven by curiosity to develop science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash poultry to learn more. It makes sense. I know this is a hot topic right now because, you know, over the last or at least in recent history, um, you know, fat prices have been pretty volatile. And so we're seeing a lot of interest in different types of fat sources and, and different ways to better utilize fat sources um, in poultry diets. So, I mean, I know I've, I've, lice of, or emulsifiers have been around for a while. Uh, what, what makes Lysophort different from, from other products or other types of molecules? Yeah, no, great question. I think um, we've done a lot of work. Um, Kevin's done a lot of work with Lysophore in regards to trying to understand, you know, the, the benefits in regards to emulsification. And I think we've done have a lot of learnings in regards to our new next generation Lysophore Extend. Mm. And I think when you look at the spectrum of different types of emulsifiers that are on on the market, there's a couple of different factors that uh, I think are important. As far as where the, uh, the lecithins are, what source you use for lecithins has an impact on the different types of uh, lysophospholipids. So, for example, there's differences between sunflower, rapeseed, um, soybean lecithins. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, I think a lot of folks look at the, the lysophospholipids in general. And I think looking at the fatty acid profile of those lysophospholipids are important, not just how much you have. I mean, obviously there's always those circumstances where more is better, but I think in this particular situation is looking at the fatty acid profile of those lysophospholipids. And then the last thing really is how you take lysolethicins to, um, uh, to lethicins to lysolethicins as far as what enzymes you use will all three of those factors will impact the efficacy of, of Lysophore, Lysophore Extend. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And so, I mean, right now, um, as we discussed, there's a, a lot of interest in different types of fats. I mean, we see everything from, you know, high quality vegetable fats to uh, lower quality vegetable fats. We see palm. Uh, obviously, people are still using animal-based fats. 
uh, in the industry as well. I mean, where do you see uh, Lisa Ford or, and, and emulsifiers having the best potential, uh, best opportunity? Um, you know, we have different phases of the diet. Obviously, we start out generally with lower fat. As the bird gets older, higher energy maintenance requirements, we generally see higher fat diets. So, um, you know, from the work that you've been doing, are there, there scenarios where you see life support, you know, and uh, working better than, than other times? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I think I'll probably start with there's two different types of avenues that you can go with life support. So the on top approach, right? So using it as an emulsifier and certainly there's benefits seen with saturated fats, um, like you said, um, unsaturated fats. Certainly there are benefits there. So that's more of the on top approach. But then you also mentioned the whole fat market volatility. Mm -hmm. um, and um, other folks look at it from reformulating uh, lysophor, reformu a reformulation perspective, right? So um, giving lysophor a energy matrix and trying to do um, with the objective of feed cost savings. As you know, there's always that aspect of things. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And, and you know, what we've talked a lot about, too, um, you know, you and I have talked about this, the work that we've done around coccidiosis and how that impacts fat digestibility. And, uh, you know, that's a message I've probably, mm -hmm. you know, overstated at times, but but I think it's always important to bring it up. I mean, you know, the work we've done, which I started with in, in looking at protein, nitrogen digestibility, amino acid digestibility, but really it was like, man, there's a lot of things happening with energy here. And it seems like a lot of what, what happens when we have an intestinal challenge is, um, you know, impaired fat digestibility. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, obviously there's an energetic cost to that, but then also we had to think about all of that excess fat in the lumen, you know, what's happening there. And I think this ties in with the word that we've, seen Audrey McElroy do, and I know people are applying where, you know, you've got calcium and the potential for calcium to form soaps with that undigested fat. So uh, certainly some some interaction there. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that um, in our circumstance in the U.S., that's kind of where we're headed. So totally a lot of your um, research looking at how COXI affects uh, fat digestibility um, in, in general. And I think not only fat digestibility, there's probably an amino acid sure. digestibility aspect to that. And so Absolutely. trying to see if Lysophore, Lysophore Extend not only helps with fat digestibility, which like you said is important, but we're really exploring the amino acid aspect of things. Because I think if you can help with digestibility um, overall, it's going to affect those other important nutrients. So we're doing some active research um, using COXI to kind of explore the digestibility issues and seeing some improvements um, in performance. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I mean, you know, I think in the U.S. in general, we probably use less feed additives than they do in other parts of the world. And, you know, often uh, when I do see diets in, from other places, um, you know, there's usually more additives and, and generally an emulsifier is one of those. So I think, mm -hmm. you know, we may be a little bit slow and probably a little bit uh, fortunate in the U S with, uh, traditionally having, you know, corn, soy diets and, and high quality fat sources. But, you know, as, as the dynamics change, um, I think we, we had to be a little bit smarter and, and maybe open the door to, to other ingredients and, and use these types of technologies to help with that. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, I think we're dealing with, uh, you know, these are high functioning animals. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think uh, I would agree that, you know, other um, countries are using different feed additives and probably a lot more. But I think in this particular circumstance, I think life support really has a, a benefit from more so a nutritional digestibility aspect versus more a I don't want to put it into the gut health bucket, so to speak. It's yeah. more focusing on that digestibility aspect or at least um, improving it. Yeah. And I mean, I'm obviously very broiler centric. And so you and I are usually talking about broilers and that's usually what I'm thinking about. But I mean, in your work with other types of poultry, um, I mean, obviously you think about turkeys and, and how how high the fat can get in turkey diets, Yes, um, you know, a little bit different, obviously, with with hens and, and breeders. I mean, are you how are you looking at this in different types of poultry? Yeah, no, ask, great question. So turkeys, like, as you said, um, a lot easier um, in that aspect. And I would say they're they're headed in the direction of reformulation. 
So trying to do the feed cost savings avenue, I would say. Um, I think when we talk about monogastrics in general, I think we're looking at it on the swine side um, to provide some benefit there, um, both from a, an emulsification and feed cost savings, hopefully in, in that area. Mm -hmm. um, still exploring the layer side of things, but I would say broilers and turkeys are really uh, a lot of the, the focus from a from a poultry standpoint. Yeah, yeah. But but certainly I would say um, Kemen in general, general is looking at, I think, all species, trying to expand our data package on the swine side, focusing on layers as well. So even though U.S. may not be focusing on it, definitely other um, business units within Kemen are. Yeah, I think this is an exciting area. I think we still have a lot to learn about. You know, I think that lipids, despite, um, you know, being a very concentrated source of energy and having a lot of other things just beyond energy, um, as far as interaction with other nutrients, you know, we really haven't focused on lipids much uh, from a research standpoint in, in the last several decades. I mean, there was a lot in the 70s, 80s right. uh, done in different parts of the world, but, but we haven't seen a lot of that recently. So I think the, I think this is a good time to, to get back to that type of research. Yeah, I would completely agree with you. I mean, some of the conversations I've had with, you know, um, nutritionists, um, out in the field, say the exact same thing. I think it's just some, just basic research, I think is yep. was really vital. And I think you kind of started that with the COXI um, investigation with fat digestibility. And I think we just need to kind of get back to that basic research and seeing what's needed by the bird. And, and especially with the bird of today, you know, it's a lot different than, you know, the, the seventies and eighties, like you talked about. Yeah. That's awesome. And, you know, I know Kimmin has a, a pretty wide portfolio. I mean, anything else in your role as a tech service manager at Kimmin that you're really focusing in on right now? Yeah, yeah. Uh, large portfolio. I think we're always, um, from my standpoint, we're always looking at what's the, the next technology um, that can help our broiler customers. You know, we mm -hmm. we spend a lot of time as well as my time out in the field and just asking questions and, and trying to see what they need um, versus what we think they need. And so I think that's really vital to my job as well as to the broiler team's job um, at this at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I appreciate that work and I know it's uh, appreciated in the field as well. Is there anything else you want to uh, mention today? No, I mean, I think we had a really great conversation um, about Lysofort and Lysofort Extend. And, you know, um, hopefully we can um, do some basic research and, and kind of move forward and, and seeing what's needed out there. Yeah, I, I agree. And I appreciate all the work that, that you're doing in this area. And um, really, really appreciate that. Um, and so with that, we'll uh, close out this episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you all in the next one. If you enjoyed this episode, uh, please take the opportunity to leave a review or subscribe to the podcast. And with that, I will see you uh, on the next episode. Thank you.